David Taylor is the head coach at Oklahoma State. I realize that I'm five days late on this, but there's also something to becoming a head coach. Like, when does that clock officially start? Is it the day you said yes? Is it the day that you shook hands? Is it the day you arrived in Stillwater? I, it's hard to say. Technically, from your opinion, they held a press conference today. And for me, when that press conference ended, boom, David Taylor is the head coach. And if you listen to the press conference, by the way, it was done by an athlete. It wasn't done by a coach. And that's also why I'm saying when he walked, that was the end. He was burying and putting behind him. You got to make an announcement. You got to say your goodbyes. He didn't put his shoes on the mat. He had, a, he had a podium. He had the audience. He had our community. And he did it today. But if you go back and you listen to that press conference, that was done by an athlete. So it's an important page to turn. And David, and I'm going to steal a quote from John Bardis. I admit that. But has been playing with house money. There's no two ways around it. This guy's already the Olympic champion. So going to winning the Olympics, like, that's awesome. That's amazing. You're already the Olympic champion. Like, we won't call you something different. We right now call you the Olympic champion. So if you go out and win the Olympics this year, we, we, we still call you the same thing. He's won the world championship. In fact, he done won that three times. Won the NCAA championship. In fact, he won that multiple times. He only lost three matches in all of college. I found that out today. I knew his career was very good, but I did not realize he had only lost three matches. And I think two of those were to Dake, by the way. All right. Lost to Arizona State. Lost to his own teammate his freshman year. Got cradled. And then I think the other two were to Dake. I know one of them was. I think they both were. All right. Didn't they meet up at the scuffle? Didn't those guys meet up at the scuffle? Because the all-star doesn't count. All right. Either way, house money. Can we agree? I mean, what an incredible thing. And then he's going to go into coaching. And he's going to do it in Oklahoma. Whoa, that sounds like a big change. Well, he, he is a coach. He's been coaching. He's been doing it in Penn State. Right? State College has got his club out there. And I, I'm sharing this with you because there was only a downhill. There's just one. This guy was cloaked in so much success. Again, if he won in Paris, we call him Olympic champion. But if he doesn't even show up to Paris, we call him Olympic champion. It just doesn't change. So, big deal for David Taylor, who, by the way, has not made one single wrong move yet. Not one. And it was a big deal that he kept Caldwell. Now, we didn't know who he was going to bring in. I didn't know his relationship. and He was, he was so tight with Gilman. I didn't know Gilman was such a showman. They fly him out private at the airport. They get a picture. Gilman's wearing a cowboy hat. I mean, come on. He had he, he, he had 25 minutes before his bag was packed and had to be on a, on a cowboy hat. That might sound small. It's not. It is this amazing photo. Not to mention, the last time I saw Gilman at Gallagher, he almost starts a fight with the entire Oklahoma State team. He brought Eric Guerrero into it, which was wrong by Gilman, by the way. Those two. Now have a great relationship, and Guerrero is even one of Gilman's coaches. Gilman walked out to the final somewhere and played the song, Mama, Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys. Which is why it was such a great shot of seeing them, Gilman on the side, cowboy hat on. It was just great. And then you got Jimmy Kennedy. Jimmy Kennedy was so good, the Russians were scared of him. They were, they were planning for him. Jimmy Kennedy won a car somewhere. He won some tournament instead of giving a medal like traditional that you can throw in your bag and really doesn't matter. They gave him a car of which you can't do anything with because it's, <laughs> listen, it was in Europe somewhere. He won a car. I can't remember that story. He, Jimmy Kennedy won a car. This guy was great. Jimmy Kennedy was great. There's another spot, which I believe has been offered to Kyle Dake. And that would create a number of problems if that were to come out. So. I don't know that to be true, but pretty exciting. And then when it comes down to decisions that you made, he said, priority number one is keeping Dayton fixed. What? That was great. That was great. And not for nothing, show him that respect. Whether you're the head now or not, this is his home. You might be the head coach. You're still the guest, at least compared to that. And he said it was priority number one. David Taylor hasn't got one wrong yet. Then 
he kept Tyler Caldwell. So important. It was so important. He had to have an Oki. And he really did need somebody aside from Kennedy. He did need somebody that knew the people in the building. He knew some of the ins and outs, some of the, the, the small things. He was familiarizing himself, not only with the camp process, the team dynamic himself, but with the administration, the bylaws of the NCAA. It was just a great move. David Taylor has not got one wrong yet. Simultaneously to all of this happening, and Taylor, amongst other things, and it's a big deal what, I, what, what I'm telling you. I mean, I'm telling you, I don't, he wasn't head coach, not for me. The way I'm going to tell the story, he was not head coach until he walked off of that stage. And I think it's overly part. Now, I believe that when he was going into it, right? I kept my son late from school. I went to the school parking lot. I walked my daughter in. I walked my son back to the car, and we watched this press conference. And I said, this could end up being your coach. You need to see his first day. But when David Taylor went up there, that was an athlete talking. He talked about some of his pains. He talked about some of his successes. He talked about how he got there. He talked about the journey that he came along with his father and his mother. It was great. It was this beautiful thing. But it was done by an athlete. And an athlete will always be selfish. He has to be. He has no choice, particularly in this game. And a coach that does well will be selfless. He has no choice. Everybody, they're they're going to get the credit. They're going to pull the straps up. And David Taylor was mentored by the best. There's nobody better than Kale. And you might, and go, feel free, you could put Coach Gable, you could put John Smith, but you'd put them as equals. There's nobody above Kale. Can we agree? You might have you might have some guys that you think are up there with him. And I share that because what would Kale do in conjunction with what did Kale do? All right. When you're coming into a situation, what did Kale do? I need to make the right choice. What did Kale do? If he, if he wasn't confronted with this, what would have he done? And that will always be asked, right? The guy will always have a guy. And it's a big deal because there, there, there is quietly something going on with Aaron Brooks. And it is, it is not right in my opinion. It's not fair in my opinion. But a lot of things are not. And the story on Brooks, and I must tell you, I'm taking this from one tweet. I don't know how accurate this is, but I, I know it's it close. It might be 100% accurate, but it's close. U23 Worlds. Aaron Brooks is on a prescription medication. Now, you can do the prescription medication, but there's a process, and it's called a therapeutic use exemption. Now, all you're going to have to do is fill out a form letting them know you're doing it. They, they will say yes every time. If, in conjunction with telling them you're doing it, you have a doctor saying, I want him to do this. All right, we're all done here. We're all done. It'll work every single time. But if you miss the paperwork and it's found in your system, big deal. You might remember that Simone Biles had, had, had pulled out of the Tokyo Olympics. Well, there was a little bit more to it which is a prescription for Ritalin, was not allowed into the country where the Olympics were being held. She's off her meds. I mean, there was just a little bit more to it. So, Brooks, I told you this isn't fair, did everything right. Brooks filled that paperwork out. Now, most guys that get hit on this simply don't even know it's a rule. Brooks did. Brooks filled the paperwork out. He had the doctor's note, and he got told yes. He was told, yes, you can use it. So now he has tested positive for a legal substance. How does that work? Well, apparently, when he went to the world trials, he filled out the paperwork and he was told yes. When he made the team, he assumed, this is the same thing, right? This is, the same, this, this is one thing. For, for these guys that make it, we go over here, this is one. So he went to the actual world championships. He did not refill out the same paperwork. And so they found in his system what he had told anybody willing to listen was going to be in his system. But now it's become an issue. And I do want to disclose for a third time, because I'm talking about a kid here. I'm talking about an amateur, right? That, that what I just told you, is based on my understanding of one tweet. And right or wrong in how this is going to fall is in the details that I don't have. So if... And this is, and I'll, I'll let you know right now, it is going to come down 100% to who was the administrative body. That's it. 
If it was UWW, it's going to be a fight, but he could very reasonably win. 60%, he won't. Just so you understand, this is against him from Jump Street. If you don't believe it, no matter how silly you think this is, okay, just simply tell me from any sport, somebody that ended up in, in question and then got clear. Go, go ahead and, and tell me. So it's going to be a problem, but it is, it is a winnable one. And if it was WADA, any money spent on attorneys and any money spent fighting this is a waste. He will not be at the Olympic Games. I can tell you that as clearly as I know how to speak. And I don't know who had authority. You also are going to have chain of custody, and you also are going to have a notification. And a notification is an issue that I don't know of any time being tested in international court. However, that's the one they need to start looking at. Because whoever had the administrative authority had an obligation to inform USAW and USAW would not have issued a Federation card to put him in the tournament had they been given that notification, which is yet again another detail that I don't actually have. But I know I'm close and I know this is developing and I bring that to you because if Brooks does not go, it defaults to David Taylor. And while David Taylor announced that he and Gilman are retired, make no mistake. Underneath that orange shirt, and the hat, and the smile, and the shout out to mom and dad, sits a dirty, rotten competitor who could win the Olympic Games and will, if given the opportunity.